right. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. How's everybody doing tonight? Blessed. Are we full of faith and victory around here? Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise Hallelujah. God. Glad to hear it. Everyone have a good day? Yes. Praise God, praise God, praise God. <clears throat> well, we're going to talk about faith tonight. Pastor Christine has been ministering along these lines now for a while. But let's just... Let's just open up with prayer. Father God, we just come before you in Jesus' name, Lord. Lord, I thank you for every person here, every person within the sound of my voice, Father, that you have a precious, precious plan for them. And Lord, you have good, good things in store for them tonight. Amen. Father, we, we ask you for utterance. Yes. We ask you for revelation knowledge. Father, I pray that including myself, every one of us, that the eyes of our understanding would be enlightened in the knowledge of you, that we may know and see what you want us to know and see, what is the hope of your calling, what are the riches of the glory of your inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of your power towards us who believe. Father, we thank you that you've made us more than conquerors. You've given us all things, and Lord, you are working behind the scenes, even now, while we're sitting here tonight, and we thank you for all the great things that are in the works and all the testimonies that are in the making. And everybody said? Amen. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, we're going to turn to the book of Hebrews, and we're going to look in chapter 11, and we're going to start in verse 1. Hallelujah. Talking about faith tonight. Faith. Yeah. Yes. The subject that is inexhaustible, yeah. <laughs> that never grows old, That's right. because it's so needed for every single aspect of our lives. Right. Right. Hallelujah. What is faith? <laughs> what does it do? So in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, and it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, if you meditate on that, it's a little bit difficult to understand unless you rephrase it. Because if faith is the substance, say, for example, I'm believing for a house. If faith is the substance, does that mean that faith is the house? No. That doesn't make sense, right? But to say it this way, faith gives substance to the things we hope for, that's a way where we can grasp it and understand. Amen. So you have to start hoping for some things. Yeah. Anybody yeah. ever hoped for anything? Yeah. Yes. From the time you were like yeah. <laughs> two days old. You hope for food. You hope for your mother's comfort, you know. So we have to hope for some things. But then we have to have faith. We have to believe and then that faith comes along and it actually gives substance to what we're hoping for. And it is the evidence of things not seen. What is evidence? Evidence is something that's concrete. It's physical. It's something you can either see or it's something that you can touch. So faith is the evidence. It's the evidence of the spirit realm. You can't see faith with your natural eyes, right? But it is a substance, and it's the evidence of the spirit realm. <clears throat> That's right. You know, when we start to believe God for something, it takes time before it manifests in this natural realm. If we could see it with our natural eyes, if we could touch it with our, our natural hands, we, we don't need faith for it. Right. Faith is only for the unseen. That's why you have to have the faith to believe that it exists without seeing it. So faith gives substance to the things that we hope for, and it is the evidence of things not seen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Evidence. evidence. What's the evidence that you have what you're believing for? How do you know you have it? Faith, exactly. Faith is the only way that you know that you have what you're believing for. I know this seems simple. We're meditating. We're going over this and over it. 
Faith is the evidence. It is the proof. Let's look at it in the Amplified Translation. <clears throat> It's a proof. Come on. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 in the Amplified, it says, Now faith is the assurance, the confirmation. Yeah. What's a confirmation? You order something online, you get a confirmation email. That's how you know it went through. Yeah. Sometimes you might think, did it really go through? I don't know. It took me to a different link, and I don't know. If you, well, you've got that confirmation email. It's just as good as if you had the item on your doorstep. The confirmation email is enough. You don't go through the rest, the rest of your day wondering and worrying, do I have that item that I was really wanting that I placed the order for? Yeah. That's right. No. It's the, con the confirmation email is enough to put your mind at ease. You got it. It's as good Amen. as yours, right? Amen. Faith is the confirmation. Yeah. It's the title deed. What if you have a house and you pay for it free and clear, you're going to get the title deed mailed to you. Now, maybe you're showing your buddy, hey, look what I got. Look what I paid off this year. And they're like, well, I don't see the house. Well, this is the title D. We're not in front of the house right now. The house is down the street. But I have the title. This is my house. I have the title D. That's right. Faith is the title D of the things we hope for. How do you know where your measure of faith is? How do you know if you really have something you're believing for? Because you know that you know that you know that you know that it's yours. Yeah. Yeah. You have peace about it. You have joy about it. There's no, really, there's no doubt. It's just, it's settled. Right. It's, you're, you're assured. You are just so at ease about it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <clears throat> so it's, it's um, the title deed of the things we hope for being the proof of things we do not see. There are so many things that we can't see with our natural eye once we pray and believe God for something. But it's the proof of things we do not see and the conviction of their reality. I know it's real because I believe it's real. My faith tells me that it's real. Faith perceiving as real fact what is not revealed to the senses. In your mind, if it's not a fact, it, 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 you're not in faith about it. <clears throat> it's Faith perceived as real fact. Come on now. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. You know, people in the world, they can't operate this way. It, it, it doesn't make sense to them. It, it unsettles them because they live so um, only on, based on what they can see yeah. with their eyes, what they can figure out with their minds, what they can touch with their hands, and that's how they run every aspect of their lives. Mm -hmm. That's how they make every decision. We as believers, we have an eye that sees the invisible. That's like right. Lester Summerall says, we have an ear that hears the inaudible. We don't make all of our decisions based on what we can see, what we can calculate, what we can touch with our hands. We make our decisions by being led by the Spirit of God. And when the Spirit of God leads you to do something or tells you to do something, faith comes. And so you can do that by faith. Amen. So we become... A different breed of people a different category of people because we're living by revelation knowledge of what we know in our spirit and we're not living by what we can we're basically living apart from our circumstances yeah. mm -hmm. Amen. this is the highest level of living this is what God has called every one of us to do to live apart from circumstances yeah. Amen. so what does this do for our everyday life what does this do for our countenance what does this do for our face? <laughs> do we have a smiling face every day? Because if we're really a person of faith and we're living apart from circumstances, then it doesn't matter what the circumstances look like from day to day. Because guess what? They fluctuate every day. Every day, your emotions are going to fluctuate. Every day, your body is going to, there may be symptoms, you'll have them one day, the next day, you don't. The next day, you might have them again. Things are going to fluctuate. We live in a natural world that changes all the time. When we're living apart from our circumstances, we have peace. We have joy. And we can be the same all the time. We can be predictable. We don't have to, people around us don't have to wonder what kind of person they're going to be getting today. Am I going to be getting a happy Elizabeth today? Or am I going to be getting a grouchy, crabby Elizabeth today? 
Am I gonna be getting a moody Elizabeth today? Or am I gonna be getting someone that's loving and sweet? Right? We should be the same every day. Now we're not perfect and we haven't arrived, but we should be pretty steady and even keel. Yeah. Amen. Because we have the Spirit of God on the inside of us. Amen. And we're people of faith. Right. And our faith Amen. propels us every single day. It leads us, it guides and directs every decision that we make. It affects how we interact with people. It affects how we see other people. Faith doesn't have any partiality. Faith looks at everybody the same. <clears throat> Faith can receive from anybody. <laughs> because, you know, some people, it, it doesn't take a whole lot of faith to listen to what they have to say. But if God sends a four-year-old to talk to you and say something, you might need a little bit more faith to believe what they're saying, right? Yeah. right. Sure. Hallelujah. Faith is no respecter of persons. Faith sees people the way that God sees them. Because, you know, God has to look at us through faith. Oh, Lord, what would he do if he didn't? <laughs> God looks at us through the eyes of faith. He doesn't look at us through the natural or based on our past or what we have or haven't done wrong. Thank God. And, you know, we have to look at ourselves by faith. We have to see ourselves the way that God sees us looking past any flaws, any past mistakes. But we have to look at each other through the eyes of faith. You have to see the potential in someone. Okay, for all of you married people, <laughs> when you met your spouse, maybe you weren't saved and so you didn't know what faith was, but once you got to know them a little better and the honeymoon was over, no doubt there was at least one or two things you saw about them that maybe you didn't see originally. Am I right? Anybody. I'm not married, but I know that that's the case yeah. because we're human beings, and I just know once you get to know someone better, you always find out things you didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but we have to learn to look at people through faith, and you look at someone, and you can see them in seed form, mm, yeah. or you can see, you just can see their, their potential. Yeah. You know, an employer has to do that with employees, yeah. too. Yeah. You hire someone, and no matter how smart and gifted and wonderful they are, it takes a while to catch on to something new, yeah. and everyone learns differently. Yeah. And so you have to um, be very patient with people, and you have to realize, you know, they're new at this. It took me a while to get the hang of it, and they're going to they're gonna catch up and kind of yeah. see them through faith, right? Yeah. 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 So faith sees ourselves the way God sees us, and it also sees other people the way that God sees them. Yeah. You see someone for what they could be. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then you just, you pray for them and you believe God, <laughs> too, Amen. and use your faith for that person. Um, so faith is the eye that sees the invisible. If you can see it with the eyes of your spirit, you can have it. Amen. So I want to talk about quiet time with God. Quiet time with God is so important. Yes. Um, we can spend time with God in a lot of different ways. We can pray um, in tongues. We can read our Bible. We can make confessions. We can even worship and praise the Lord. But if we don't get quiet, then we're not going to hear what he has to say to us. Amen. If we just come and go through the motions and then get up and leave and go about our day, we didn't give him an opportunity to communicate to us. And so we're going to talk tonight about faith and vision because God has a, a plan and a vision for your life. Amen. And he wants you to get that from him, but you have to spend quiet time with him because it might take a little bit of time for him to show you some things or for your spirit to just get quiet enough, you know, quiet enough to be able to hear what he's trying to say to you. So let's turn to Psalms chapter 46. Psalms chapter 46. You know, I did this, um, I think it was last week. Um, I came home and um, I was going to read my Bible. I had some free time. And then I was going to pray and then I was going to do this and do that. And I just felt like, you know, nothing was just, nothing sat right with me. Whatever I tried to do, I, I couldn't focus and it just wasn't, you know, hitting the mark. So I just <clears throat> felt prompted to be quiet. And I spent a good portion of the afternoon in silence. But 
I was being silent and I was just listening and I was enjoying the presence of God and not thinking about anything and just allowing my mind to just rest. And do you know, after that quiet time with God, I left more, just so refreshed, more refreshed than I had been in so, so long, just by being quiet, spending my day or part of my day in silence. And God was able to show me some things that I would not have picked up any other way. Amen. Because our mind gets, tries to get in the way. Yeah, that's right. yeah. Even when you're praying in tongues, your mind can be going in circles. Or when you're yeah. reading, your mind's definitely engaged. When you're confessing, you're using your mind, right? Yes. But just being quiet and just, just basking in the presence of God, not thinking about anything, he'll come and it's like you can, you can just, you can, um, here you can pick up what he's saying you can see things it's like his uh, images take form in you I, I don't know am I, am I making sense yeah. yeah it's like you can just begin to dream it's like because you're blank you're like an empty slate he can come and he can put images and he can put things in you you're just you're just empty but if you're full of stuff it's hard for him to come and put like a brand new idea in you that you never thought of before that's right yeah. But he has so many things, he has so many dreams for us and things that he wants to show us, but we have to just be quiet sometimes. And it is scriptural because Psalm 46, 1. Oh, wait, that's the wrong verse. Okay, well, it's, is it verse 10? Okay, it's verse 10. It says, be still and know that I am God. Just be still. It's so easy to just get into the mode of being busy or thinking that you have to do something, you have to produce something, you have to figure something out. And if I'm not busy, if I'm not producing, yeah. Yeah. I can't handle it. It's like, I just have to be producing or I feel like I'm a lazy bum. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we, we can't all, we have to kind of get out of that mode sometimes. Because then it's like we think everything is based on us and what we yeah. can produce. Right. Yeah. Some people have higher production rates than others. Right? Yeah. But either way, God can produce some things in us and through us. <clears throat> if we'll just get out of that, that mode, it's like, I call it the rat race. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, and yes, when you're in the rat race, you can accomplish a lot in the natural. Because you get in that mode. Whatever you give yourself to, you develop that. So if you're in the mental, all, if you have a job that's very mental and you're in the mental arena all day long, you get into that flow and you become really skillful and quick and you become more and more focused and your production rate increases of what you're accomplishing with your mind, right? But you do that day after day after day after day after day after day after day. You may excel at your career and in whatever field of business you're in, but your spirit man will begin to suffer because of it. So we have to we have to have a balance. We have to get out of the the rat race sometimes and force our flesh to pull aside from that. It might mean maybe being a little less productive one day. Not every day, but it might, sometimes the order of the day might just be, you need to just be in the spirit today. Right. If you're working a job, a full-time job, you can't do that, but you have periods of time where you can do that. Hours after work, or the weekend, or this, there's a some point where you can do that, where you've got to incorporate it into your, your week, every single week. Because we don't want to develop our minds at the expense of our, of our spirit. <clears throat> Amen. But we need to just be still and know that he is God. Hallelujah. He is God. He can do what we cannot do in a million years. When we're led by the Spirit of God, he will direct us to do things that are unconventional. He will direct us to do things that unsaved people do not understand. That's right. 
Because unsaved people think, okay, in order to get from point A to point B, I have to do X, Y, Z, and I have to go like this. Yeah. But when you do things God, God's way, God might say no. In order for, to get from point A to point B, you're going to do something completely different yeah. that doesn't make sense at all. Right? Yep. right? Yep. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Be still and know that I am God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Aren't you thankful that you're not God? Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So <clears throat> just spending quiet time with God and taking time to just develop our spirits. And, you know, there's seasons of life, too. Okay, so some seasons are really, really, really busy, right? Yeah. Yeah. There's just going to be seasons like that. When you're parents of young children, you're going to be busier, <laughs> especially if you have young children and you're working full time. If you have little children and you're not working full time, then it's not, you have more time than you think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but there's, my point is there's seasons that are busier. Yeah. Um, when you're, like Josiah for example, Josiah you're going to school full time and you're working full time, right? Part time. Part time? Part time. Okay, <laughs> well were you at one point working, full, doing both full time? Okay, well anyway, some people are, so. Some people are going to school full-time and they have to work full-time to pay their bills, okay? That's an example of a season of life that's really, really busy. Yeah. So there's going to be seasons like that, but God doesn't want us to live our entire life like that. And we have to recognize what season that we're in and go with that season. <clears throat> but at some point, you've got to make it your goal to get out of the rat race yes. so that you can give more time to the things of the Spirit and for some people, that may be re retirement, right? Yeah. We're not, a, we're at this church, we're against retiring, mm -hmm. meaning in the sense we're against just quitting everything and moving away and doing nothing. Yeah. But we're not against retiring from corporate America or retiring from your job. Right. So for some people, that may be their season <laughs> where they finally can get out of the rat race. For all you retired people, yeah. lift your hands and say, Amen. Amen. <laughs> Isn't it nice? Yeah. I have a lot of retired customers, and they're great, and they just, they have such wonderful lives, from my viewpoint anyway, <laughs> when I'm there working, and they're just relaxed, and just enjoying, talk, want to talk the whole time, and I'm like, I have a lot of things to do, and I have to clean your whole house, when you're just sitting there, so I gotta go, but um, just... They've gotten out of the rat race. So our goal needs to be, we need to eventually at some point, we want to get out of the rat race so that we can give ourselves more to the things of the Spirit. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. <clears throat> so faith sees. We're going to talk about four things tonight that the God kind of faith does. One first thing is it sees. It's the eye that sees the invisible. You've got to see it with the eyes of your spirit, and then you can have it. Amen. So you've got to spend time with God and get quiet so that you can see what he wants you to see. Mm -hmm. And then number two, faith believes. So once God shows you something and you see it in your spirit, guess what? There's still going to be the opportunity to doubt it. Maybe God really didn't say that to you because it feels different today than it did yesterday when God was talking to you in his presence. <clears throat> so once God speaks to you and you see something with the eyes of your spirit, you have to choose to believe it. Yeah. And believe it every day. You have to hold fast to what he said and meditate on it. Nope, this is what the Lord said. I'm holding fast to it. And I'm going to be um, I'm gonna be patient. Hallelujah. So you've got to believe it. And then number three, faith speaks. That's right. In 2 Corinthians 4.13 it says, And since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believed and therefore I spoke. We also believe and therefore speak. Amen. So we've got to speak what we believe. Amen. That's right. Uh, let's turn to Matthew 12, 34. <clears throat> there are two types of confessions. Um, we're supposed to confess the word as believers. But one of the types of confessions is that it, it's it's... It's meant to school you into faith. So you're confessing something you're con because it's the word and you know you should, and you're trying to get it into your heart so that you actually believe it. Yes. 
Uh, but then there's another kind of confession. There's the kind of confession that you're doing actually already in faith, and you're saying it because you already fully believe it. Yeah. That's the kind of confession that brings pretty quick results. Yes. Because so, Jesus said in Matthew 12, 34, <clears throat> say amen when you're there. Amen. amen. Jesus said, um, how can you being evil speak good things for out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks? So this is just um, a spiritual law, whether good or bad. If you really believe something, you're going you're gonna to speak it. Mm -hmm. So if you want to find out what someone believes, you just need to spend a little bit of time around them and yeah. ask some questions yeah. to, to locate them, and you'll find out real quickly what they believe because people speak what they believe. Yeah. Yes. So we need to do both kinds of confessions. We need to speak the word because we're endeavoring to get it into our heart and get faith to come in them. When we speak, um, when we're actually in faith, then things are going to move more quickly. Um, so faith speaks. And then number four, faith receives. Yes, amen. Hallelujah. Faith Hallelujah. receives the answer. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't work, it's not faith. Yep. There's never, there's no such thing as a faith failure. There's no risk to faith. Amen. Yeah, that's right. The risk is only if you think you're in faith and then and then you're not and you get out beyond what you can really believe for. So let, let's turn to Mark chapter eleven. Hallelujah. Mark chapter eleven. Has anybody caught any of the live stream meetings in uh, California? Yeah. Oh yeah, every single one. Good for you. Praise yeah. God. Yeah. <laughs> that's okay, we'll catch it tomorrow. She's retired. <laughs> I encourage you guys to watch those if you haven't. They've been so good. Yes, amen. And um, just a real blessing. So they're available on YouTube or Facebook. So Mark eleven twenty three. Jesus said, For assuredly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Or, I like the actual original King James translation. It says, um, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. But, I want to point out the last the last four words of this verse, and ye shall have yeah. them. Yeah. Or in the New King James, it says will. Is will sh or shall, is that used in the uh, present tense, past tense, or future tense? Future. It's the future, isn't it? A lot of times people, faith people think that if I say I don't have it yet, I'm not really in faith. But it says here, you shall have them. It doesn't say what things so you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you have them. You believe you receive it in the spirit realm, right? right. Yeah. We do believe that. Yeah. Right. But you don't have it in the natural yet. Yeah. Yeah. And <clears throat> if you think you do without seeing it, then you don't know what a man the definition of a manifestation is. <laughs> And you're confused about faith. <clears throat> if I'm believing for healing in my body, like um, say I wear glasses, I don't, I wear contacts, but say I'm believing for my eyes to be healed and I pray, Lord, I thank you um, for healing my eyes. I believe I receive it in Jesus' name. And then I stomp on my glasses before I have it because I think according to this verse, I have it. Well, yeah, I have it in the spirit, but I don't have it in the natural yet. I'm going to be going without seeing for a while, right? Good chance. It says you will have them. You will have them. It's scriptural to believe that you're going to have something. That's right. But notice another thing about this verse is that it doesn't say when you will have them. No, it doesn't. Say. It doesn't. That's true. <laughs> Could be different for everyone, for every situation. Um, could be totally different. It doesn't say you're going to have them in two months. 
It doesn't say you're going to have them in two weeks, two years, three years, nine years, ten years. It doesn't say when you're going to have them. Now, some things are time specific, right? Yeah. Um, other things are not. And, you know, a lot of what I've come to realize and a lot of what we believe God for, God is so much wiser than we are. Yes, amen. Some things are delayed because of maybe other people's disobedience or maybe other people are involved. And if you're believing for finances, yes, God has to work through other people. Certain things have totally to happen, not. right? Right. Absolutely. But that's not the case with everything that we believe God for. Nope. And sometimes finances is not even contingent on other people either. That's right. Some of the time, or I, I want to say a lot of the time, when we believe God for something, we think we're ready for it, but God in his wisdom sees that we're not. Mm -hmm. yeah, or there's a lesson that we need to learn still. Yeah. Um, there's revelation that he's trying to get across to us. Um, That's right. I was, um, I don't know, did anybody catch the meeting with Jesse DeClanis mm -hmm. um, from last night? Yeah. 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 I really like um, one of the things he said. He said that the Lord dealt with him for a whole year to basically go into the ministry. Like, surrender, I want you to go to the altar, and you need to ask me for a ministry, and you need to be in the full-time ministry preaching. And all year long, he was getting invitations to minister at all these different places. God kept dealing with them. And he kept turning them down, all of them. And then finally, after God dealt with him for a whole year to go and do that, he did. He went, he surrendered. <clears throat> but guess what? Then all of a sudden, everything seemed to dry up. Not one person reached out to him for a meeting. And so a whole year went by. And at the end of the year, it was about the same time he had surrendered. He's like, Lord, what's going on here? And the Lord said to him, uh, basically, you made me wait a year. <laughs> and basically, the Lord said to him, don't ever make me wait again, son. Right. Yeah. God actually wanted to teach him a lesson. Yes. Mm -hmm. Not because God's spiteful no. or trying to punish us. That's but right. God sometimes knows that that's the only way we will never forget that. That's right. So unfortunately, it, it was unfortunate he had to learn that way. But God, God knew this is something he, he won't forget. He's never going to make me wait again. <clears throat> Sometimes God makes us wait for things, and there's a reason for it. Yeah. Maybe we disobeyed. We were disobedient in the past, and so maybe that's why we're experiencing some of the circumstances we're experiencing. And so the way to get out of that is obviously you repent That's and right. you make it right and you start using your faith and obeying God every day and doing what he's telling you to do. But it may still not turn around instantly. It may take some time. But it's, when it says here, what, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. My point is that it doesn't say when. And some things take a while because there's something that we still we're not getting there's a missing piece to the puzzle so that means that we need to be seeking God and figuring out if it is something on our end so that we can change it and receive what he's wanting us to receive yeah. we can speed up the process if we will just obey him when we really truly like when our conscience is clear before God and we are we know that we are doing everything that he's asked of us. Like, as far as we know, we are, right? right. Your faith can begin to work, and things will turn around. A another thing Jesse DePlanis was saying is, he said, the Lord never said no to me. Has never said no. But he also said, other than that one year when he resisted God about going into the ministry, since then, as far as he knows anyway, he's never said no to the Lord. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I was doing some reflecting myself, when I heard that, and I, I was thinking, just in my, um, <clears throat> I think, decade, well, maybe it's been 13, 12, 12 years since I've been sold out to living for God, right? Um, I don't count anything before that in my life as being of any value. <laughs> but since I've been living for God, could I say that I've never said no to God? And in my case, I couldn't say that 
now as of the last two years, and especially even the last year, can I say that I've said yes to every single prompting and leading that I knew was the Lord? Yes. Amen. I can say yes. Amen. My conscience is clearer than it's ever been. Hallelujah. Because I have settled everything with God. And as far as I'm concerned, I will never purposely disobey the Lord again. Amen. But there was a season when I said no a lot. And I wasn't saying no because I wanted to be rebellious. I was saying no because I was in fear and not faith. Yeah. And some of the things the Lord was asking me to do, my faith wasn't perfect, and I was afraid. And I yielded to worry and didn't do what the Lord said in a lot of areas. And so I live in the wilderness for, I'm getting out of the wilderness right now, but I've basically been in the wilderness for the last seven years because of my disobedience. Hallelujah. Glory. We've all been there. And yeah, we've all, Kenneth Copeland was talking one of the nights about uh, when he disobeyed the Lord and he's having to use his faith to turn some things around because of the season way back yonder when he disobeyed the Lord regarding his wife and things like that. But my point is, when, our, when we say yes to the Lord and our conscience is clear, if we stay on that path, Things, things should be like boom, 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 yeah. boom, boom, yeah. boom, snapping into place. We should be yeah. getting manifestations and results. Amen. If we're not, we might we might not have gotten to that place or been there long enough where we've been saying, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. That's right. Because I've noticed, because God is not a liar, when you are doing everything the Lord tells you to do, you're seeking and you're walking by faith, you're, you're just, you're moving forward with him, things are going to begin to change for you. That's right. God can change things so That's quickly. Right. Amen. If things are slow, it's because you didn't listen or you're not listening. Amen. That's right. right? Yes. And so I am just so thankful that God has been so patient with me. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. He's given me not one, two, three, four, five, but probably six chances Amen. to get some things right. I don't know how many times my life's been rerouted. Guys, I'm not saying this to, to like talk about myself. I'm saying this to help people tonight, that when you completely surrender, when you completely yeah. operate in faith and do everything God tells you to do, I'm saying don't operate in fear. Don't worry. Don't resist God if he tells you to do something. I don't care what your reason for disobeying is. Don't disobey. You don't know what it's going to cost you. Amen. That's right. You don't know. That's right. You just don't know. You could spend the next seven years in, in regret, wishing, I wish I would have obeyed God. This is not to make any, this is not to make anybody feel condemned or anything like that. It's so that you can turn things around yes. so that you can move forward and God can make it up to you and get you to where you should have been all along. God can turn things quickly if you will just operate in faith. <clears throat> If you'll just say yes to God, to whatever he says, every single day. And so the last two years, that's what I've been doing. Every single day, yes, Lord, yes. Whatever you lead me to do, yes. And God's been training me in my business because that's the way he's training me right now. That's what he has, the avenue he has to train me. So, you know, I want you to do this today. I want you to, you know, book all of these appointments. And then there's a season where you're just so physically exhausted but you, you're putting your flesh down every day to obey the Lord and follow every leading he, give this person this discount, charge this amount, do this, do that. Like just following the Lord's leading in every aspect of my business because I didn't know what I was doing when I began. And then I joined a, um, a coaching program to help me and I paid a, a, a good sum of money for it. And when I did, I took it and it was, very, it was helpful, I don't regret it. But taking that course, I realized that so much of what they taught in there that people pay for, the Holy Ghost had already showed me how to do like Amen. all of that. Amen. And I was like, wow, you don't have to be that smart or anything. All you have to do is listen every day and he will show you what to do. He will show you how to make the money. He'll show you where the customers are, how to charge them, how to, anything you can think of, how to find the employees, how to train them, how to deal with this situation before it happens, how to see stuff, how to lead people, how to everything. Amen. Yeah. He'll show you. And so he's been training me. And then, you know, and I'm just saying this as a testimony. We've done pretty well. Good. What I had believed yeah. for for a long time, our income got to that level. 
and got really very, very high for several months. And then the Lord began dealing with me because then it was getting to the point where I didn't even really honestly, like I wasn't really needing, feeling like I needed to use my faith anymore. It was like, I'm good. <laughs> like, I can do whatever I want pretty much, and we're going to be good because I can figure out where everything's coming for. All I have to do is book as many appointments as I want and hire as many people as I want. There's never a shortage of business and just keep going. I mean, I would use my faith to get the right customers and stuff like that, but it was getting to where I was like just, I could figure everything out. And then everything started, um, all hell began breaking loose, <clears throat> right? Of course, um, I signed the contract to buy a home. I don't know if that has anything to do with it, but you know, it just, things became crazy. Um, and I'm, I'm sharing all this to help for a reason. There's a, a whole point to this, but the, one of the employees that I had that was bringing in tons of revenue, all of a sudden be, just appeared to be crazy and wasn't doing their job and was not cleaning at all. And people were saying, like, they came to our house and like were here for like three hours and didn't even clean anything. So she had a, the, the Lord told me, get rid of her immediately. <clears throat> so I did. And then we were looking to replace her and just all this series of events happened. But my point is, there's seasons and I'm following the Lord's leading and doing and obeying everything he's telling me to do. Because now, what I want to do is say, okay, well, I'm just going to run the job ads and hire people because there's tons of people that need this job, and I'm just going to keep going full force ahead. But the Lord actually led me to cut back. And he said, wait a minute, you need to boot all these clients. That means bye-bye thousands and thousands of dollars for this month, <laughs> less than what we made before. Um, and you need to slow down in the hiring you need to just slow everything down you need to just you need to get in the spirit and you need to spend time with me because i'm not going to necessarily mm, prosper you solely based on this like maybe you were kind of starting to think for a little while god wants our dependency to be completely on him that's right so <clears throat> i know how i knew how to like paul said i know how to be a base then i know how to <clears throat> um Enjoy plenty. So those couple years, I was obeying the Spirit's leading by constantly accelerating, accelerating full force, and it felt good. Woo, I'm seeing all this, like, finally something in the natural, like, all this stuff is just happening so quickly. But then I also know how to obey the Spirit's leading when he says, slow down, stop. Money does not make any of my decisions for me. I develop my faith and my skill from, of listening over the past few years enough to know <clears throat> what I have faith for and what I don't, to use mix natural wisdom and use it with my faith. Right. <laughs> don't be foolish, because at one point I thought, well, I'm just going to shut it down completely, because I'm caught in the ministry. That wasn't God. That <clears throat> was, you know, crazy, and I had to recoup from that. But now it's just following what he says to me <clears throat> every single day and just staying balanced. <clears throat> And so my faith is working at full capacity. My conscience is perfectly clear. It's just, it's such a good feeling on the inside to just have so much peace and know I'm following everything he says. And you develop your ability to hear because uh, when you, when he, when he shows you something and then it comes to pass, just like he said, your confidence increases yeah, yeah. because it's like every time he says something to me, it's, it comes to pass. He told me, do this. I did it. It worked. He told me, don't do that. I didn't do that. A every single little decision right. over these last couple of years, just watching it and just having success and having accuracy and having results. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <clears throat> so God wants us to be completely dependent on him and just following him every single day and obeying him. And if we continue to do that, things will accelerate. Things will move quicker. We'll start to experience manifestations in our life we'll get out of the wilderness we'll start to go into the promised land and then god will be able to start granting things because remember we were talking about in verse 24 where he says and you will have it mm -hmm. there's a timing of god for yeah. so many things that's right and it's not always now right. but when you follow when you're willing to follow god no matter what and just trust him every single day yeah. and obey him 
then you just wait and see. Just wait a little while. Because he's going to start coming through for you. And it, the time frame is going to get shorter and shorter and shorter. Instead of you will have it six months from now, you will have it two years from now, ten years from now. It's like you'll have it, boom, like a lot quicker. Because God, God's going to start working in your behalf and making things come to pass very, very quickly. Amen. Amen. Because you're obeying him. In everything. Am I making sense yeah. or am I being too repetitive? <laughs> okay. So, <clears throat> there's a timing of God. There's a timing of God. And God in his wisdom does not always give us what we're believing for or wanting immediately. That's right. But when you're willing to do whatever he says, when you're willing to wait however long you have to wait, like God, I'll wait for eternity if you want me to. I'm just, I'm just sold out to you. I'm dead to myself, dead to your own dreams, desires, timing, way of thinking, ambitions, whatever. Everything. Dead to everything except for him. Alive to Christ. He will do, he will bend over backwards for you. He will do any, there's nothing that he won't do for you. That's right. There's nothing that he won't do. So if things aren't happening as quickly as you like, don't be discouraged. Don't be discouraged. Just know, you know, when I'm exactly where I need to be, he'll make it happen. He's not worried about it. He's got it. He can do a whole lot more than we think, folks. That's right. A lot of the time he doesn't because he chooses not to. Because we're not, we're not as far along as we think we are, right? Yeah. Yeah. We all think we're so much further along than we really are. But we need to we need to learn. We need to learn what he's wanting us to learn. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isn't this exciting? Yeah. It, it helps it helps you it, it'll help your faith in God because it's like it's not that he's not able. It's not that, oh well, everything's just contingent on someone else. Maybe someone else isn't obeying type of thing. No, God's bigger than that. God's bigger than someone else's disobedience too. He's got billions of people on the planet he can work through. God knows how to get something to you when he really wants to, when he sees that you're really, really ready. Amen. Are your motives right? Is your heart right? Are you really fully consecrated and surrendered? When you get into that place, he will bring it to pass. Things will change. And that takes the pressure and that takes the weight off of us. Because it's like we don't have to try to make it happen. We don't have to be worried because he's not in heaven worrying. He's got all the time in the world to wait. He is never in a hurry. That's right. One day to, one day to him is like a thousand years with us. Mm -hmm. and, and God wants his, he has a purpose for your life and a plan for your life. He wants it to come to pass more than you do. That's right. But did you know that he's not in any rush to bring it to pass? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because he will just sit there. He's, God is more patient than any of us can even imagine. That's so true. He'll just sit there year after year after year, waiting till we're ready. I'm waiting. <laughs> I'm waiting, Lord, like That's five, right. six, seven years, you know, year after year after year. I'm waiting. He's not in a rush. He doesn't care about how long something takes or doesn't take. He's going to take whatever time is needed to develop you, just like Moses in the wilderness. He let Moses sit out there for 40 years. So if we want things to move faster, we just need to we need just to get things in place. And God will move. He's able. He's so big. His ability is so great. In fact, let's turn to Ephesians chapter 3. Mm -hmm. Ephesians 3. Hallelujah. And, you know, we have examples to look at. We have our pastors. We have Pastor Nancy Dufresne or someone like, I encourage you to watch Jesse Duplantis' message. Because when you when someone's been walking with God for a long time and they're they're sold out and they're saying yes, you can look at their life and see that God is always bringing the things to pass for them. He's always moving. Things are always coming to them. God's not a respecter of persons. He won't just do that for them. It's because of their phase of spiritual development. It's because of the sacrifices they've made, all the things that they've said yes to, yeah. that we don't know about, right? So that means we can get to that place too. So Ephesians 3 and verse um, verse 20, 
And it says, now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us, to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. One more thing. Just like, this is a perfect example. Um, this last day's revival that was prophesied about well over 100 years ago, we are way overdue. God wants it to happen, but guess what? He's patient and he's waiting on us. That's right. He's He's not going to bring it to pass apart from us. He'll take all the time that is needed. If he has to skip over another generation, he doesn't want to. Then he'll skip over another generation. And then he'll skip over the generation after that. Because he's going to wait. He's going to bring it to pass in his time when he decides to bring it to pass. And it's gonna, But his time is going to be because people are ready for it. Amen. Because we're ready. We have to get into position. We have to be ready in every single area of our lives. Amen. And God is able. He's able. He will bring it to pass. He's able to make all grace abound toward us. Yes. That we being sufficient, self-sufficient, will have enough for every good work. And that's just in the area of finances. But he's so great. Guys, we haven't even begun to see all that God is capable of doing. Our generation has not seen what he can do. He can make limbs grow out. Amen. He can raise the dead. Yeah. He can perform financial miracles like we have never seen it. Right. He can make your life look so different that nobody would recognize it. He can bring you from here to here. Right. Do you know what he can do? The problem in the church and in our lives is not that God lacks ability. Yes, God is not lacking. That that does something for my faith. Because I think, thank God, he's not, it's on my end. If there's a problem, it's me. I need to fix it. It's never, ever, ever with him. So if I just work, worry about my part and make the changes I need to make, then there's no doubt in my mind, in his time, he will put me into the place that he has for me. He'll bring it to pass. He'll move heaven and earth. He'll do great and mighty things. I don't have to worry about his part That's or about him not being big enough, not being able to put it over. Gosh, maybe he needs some help. Maybe I'll just get involved and try to help him. <clears throat> no, he's able and he's willing and he wants to do it. That's right. So we're just going to get in position like never before, right? Amen. We're going to do the right thing with the word. We're going to say yes to the spirit of God. Every day. We're not going to operate in fear. Amen. And this will be the greatest year we have ever, Amen. ever experienced. It will be so Amen. different than any other year we've ever seen Hallelujah. before yeah. if we will do those things. Amen. And it's going to be great. Amen. It's going to be really good. So I'm looking forward to it. I know you guys are too. Yeah. And um, just to kind of go over, rehash what I the four points, again, is that there are four things that God kind of faith does. Faith sees, faith believes, faith speaks, and then faith receives. Yes. Receives. And we're going to get all that God has for us in this year. Amen? Amen. Amen? Well, thank you guys for coming out tonight. Pastors will be back on Sunday. And they love you guys. And we hope you have a great evening. And we'll see you then. Amen. Bye. Amen. Bye.